tracking is, it's an art. It's a bit of a performance. It's almost a bit of a sport. When you're encountered with a variety of different experiences and challenges, you get better, whether you're playing a sport, you know, or, or whether you're studying something. Hello, everybody. I'm Walter Pullman from the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources at the University of Vermont. And I'm really pleased to be out here about 20 minutes east of campus at Jericho Research Forest, a fabulous outdoor classroom any time of year. But we're here on this uh, cold February afternoon, and it's a, a perfect day uh, for doing some tracking. Most students and community members who come out here, they're really kind of focused on the incredible diversity of trees in this place. As I look around, there's a big pine plantation right down here. I see Norway spruce planted up in here. And then quite an extensive northern hardwood forest that surround us all. So this is a great learning laboratory for studying forested ecosystems. And today, though, we're really going to focus on, on what animal life is doing in February. With this blanket of snow providing protection from temperatures, but also a, a template for recording movements of creatures. And I'm really pleased that we have my friend and colleague Mike Kessler as our guide today. Mike's a tracker. He's taught many courses uh, to UVM students over the years. And uh, he was willing to come out with us on this February afternoon to take a look and see what stories are written in the snow. All right, Mike, great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. And uh, I know you've had a lot of experience tracking out here at Jericho. What, what's special about Jericho to you? The diversity here is extraordinary. In a tracker, it's everything that goes into tracking is highly diversified here. You could be in a hardwood forest and then 100 yards, you'll be in a softwood. You can even be near a brook, Mill Brook, or up by the Vernal Pool, or on sheer rock cliffs behind the Vernal Pool. And with that diversity in habitat comes diversity in wildlife. You have big animals and you have small animals. Big animals like moose and bear, down to small animals, which are the bottom of the food chain here, but they support a variety of predators. So all of your little varmints, your rodents, and predators all the way up to goshawks, owls. Every predator in Vermont, I think, is represented here. I think every species in Vermont is represented here. Well, before we go out there, I just want to ask you one thing, and that is, you know, how did you get into tracking in the first place? What drew you to it? I, I just started getting books, and I started reading about it, and uh, somewhere along the line, there was a recommendation to draw, saying, like, you don't really know something until you draw it, and I wanted to know tracks so well, so I started drawing them everywhere. I counted it up. I filled up, I think, five books of 100 pages of just drawing tracks in all different substrates. And then once you do something like that, it almost takes on a momentum of its own. When I get on one of those trails, my energy level just goes up and I start going <laughs> I like that. Foxes tend to cross here. See how there's an opening between these? It's almost like these are slalom gates yeah. that you could ski through. Yeah, that's cool. Deer may be walking through here. They're going to browse. And so my guess is there's a well-worn animal trail here. That's more of your typical four-legged. You can go right through here. And so, Mike, am I right? Are we seeing a fox go up through here? Yes, this one is, is a fox. There's clearly only four toes. And the, the way those four toes on the fox hit, they hit like this. And there's usually... A, you can usually draw an X between all four toes, and there's usually a little hump of snow, like a pyramid in the middle, right here. I see that, yeah. Same here, there's that X with a little hump. So, well, actually, why don't you follow this trail? I'll go on this side, you, you stay on the, the left side. Always look ahead a little bit to see where oh, you're going. Yeah, there's something converging. Here. Yeah. Oh, this is very cool. So as I'm seeing this, uh, this is a, a very different footprint coming in here from the left. Oh gosh, yes. And uh, I think you were saying, look for five toes versus four toes. Yes. You can go one, two, three, four, five. That's definitely a fissure. Here we have a fissure coming in. And then here we have our fox coming up. 
Yeah. But this is such a nice one right here. You can see it's like you got an ice, a scoop of ice cream on an ice cream cone. And it's got one, two, three, four, five toes. And then it has a heel pad that's like this right here. Right there. So he, these are two really good fisher prints. And they are right on top of each other in the same trail now, right? Yeah. Fisher and Fox together. Yeah. As you follow a trail, scan the track, see if you can keep counting the toes, and then also look at the placement like dots in a row. There's a pattern, a frequent pattern. Does the pattern stay the same or does it change? When the pattern changes, it means the animal shifted gears in the transmission. Every gate is a gear, shifting or downshifting. You know, to accelerate or slow down, it tells a story. Sometimes the patterns change if it changes its head position. If I was a marionette, a puppet, and here are my four feet. If I'm going this way and I'm looking behind me on the right, look what happens to my feet. Or if I look the other way, my front feet go here. And what's cool, if I'm sneaking across, like say a highway or someplace I'm not supposed to be, I'm going to run like this, sideways. And that's what's called a side trot. So when an animal like a fox is sneaking through a part of woods, you will see it do a side trot. So that's why I say tune into the baseline. And when there's a disturbance to that pattern of tracks, it tells you something. Here's a front foot. Here's a front foot. And now here they are again, further apart. So we're accelerating. Oh, but then we got this thing in the way. <laughs> so what do we do? Do we go under it or do we go over it? That looks like something broke through coming down. So I'm wondering if it went over it. What if the fox went under and the fisher went over? <laughs> We have something of interest here. Scat. Oh, all right. This looks like the fox, though. You're right. It does look like fox scat. The feet of the fox are here, 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 and here. I don't know if anybody's watched their dog poop, but what they do is they tuck the front in and bring the rear around. And so you get a cluster of tracks like this all together. Yeah. And yeah. It might move once or twice before it takes off. <laughs> there we go. Up that way. Yeah. Oh, I like the looks of this guy. Ah. Whoa, look at that too. Whoa. What's down in there? I see pee, it looks like, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like there's some urine right here. And this squirrel came out of this tree. It looks like, doesn't it? Oh, came down, yeah. And, and, you, and something was happening up in the tree that it was... Oh, yeah. Removing some of the bark. Or was it eating up there? I don't know, do we have teeth mark on this? Perhaps. Perhaps it was uh, getting a buried nut there yeah, and, and taking then taking it up. It up. Yes. If it's doing that on a regular basis, the predators are going to hunt that on a regular basis. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. We're, this is uh, an acorn and we're in a maple forest here. So yeah. we carried it from somewhere else perhaps. Oh, look at this trail going away. Typical fisher going away right here. <laughs> this is fantastic. I have seen on snow like this where a fisher will go up to a hole that either a vole or a chipmunk is going in and out of and lay down on their belly with their chin right on the edge of the hole. So it's like you got Tyrannosaurus rex with the mouth open, boom, like that. Oh, it's like, wow. wow. It almost doesn't seem fair, but this might be what it was doing here. I just can't see the belly laying down anymore because when it got up and turned around and peed, it made too many tracks. Definitely looks like our fox here. We do know that fox, the way they hunt, is they will hear something under the snow, go straight up, both front feet, try to pin it and get it like that. That could be that over there. But the other thing is that fishers are renowned for jumping out of trees, high up in a tree. 
they'll jump out, put all four feet out like a parachute, and land in the snow. Boof! That's the fisher track going that way, and the squirrel's going there, and the fox continues. Where's the fox going? <laughs> as a scientist, you're deconstructing something, but you're also, as an artist, you're constructing a story, a narrative, and it becomes rather poetic at times. You've had a chance to get a lot of students involved with your courses. What do you hope they get out of the experience ultimately? Ultimately, it's that um, by becoming familiar with the habits and the activities of the creatures here, you, you become so close, you develop an affinity with them, a relationship. And that relationship is something you start to feel. And when you bring it here, it's almost like reconnecting. That's how I feel coming back here. It's like a big family that I know. I know all the different people in the family. When we have that, then everything else seems to fall into place. The motivation to study it more, of course, preserve it and conserve it, and keep sharing that. To see people's attitude about certain creatures change so much, like about the fisher, which most people grow up hearing that it's this diabolical creature that just steals everybody's pet and kills them. Well, it is, it's a weasel and it's a very good hunter. But once you follow them in here and see what they're doing, it's just stunning. You almost fall in love with them. You don't want to see them extirpated anymore. You want to see them preserved. <laughs>